Hello everyone and welcome back to another video here at Table One. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're back playing with a Zuyan Zorak V Star. When I played with it for the video, it felt amazing. It's been um, widely played at online tournaments and it's been getting decent results. Seems like a step behind Palka V Star for sure, um, but seems like a step above Giratina V Star, which is something that really surprised me personally. But um, yeah, Taking Curse is just a really powerful attack doing 50 damage for each of your Pokemon that has any damage counters on it. So if all six are damaged, then that means um, 300 damage. And with a choice spell, that's 330. And even with Halucha, you can do even more damage. And the Phantom Star V-Star power is very destructive, but also very good. It's essentially research. You discard your hand and you draw seven cards. So you can technically once per game research twice or Marnie and then research, which is really good or boss and research, which is the dream, right? Um, pairing with it is Bibrel. The list hasn't changed much from the first video I made. Bibrel helps us with Industries and Scissors getting um, getting extra cards. Rain Halucha helps us power up with a big match doing extra damage to VMAX Pokemon, which are a little bit out of range due to the damage reduction from double turbo energy. And then we have Diancy with Princess Esquirtan to um, cover for our Zorax on turn one, especially if we start one. We can use the first attack void return to 30, switch to the bench and hide behind Princess Esquirtan so it doesn't get gusted up. And um, can also spike draw in a pinch. Whilst we have Gengar to Netherworld Gate, when it's in the discard pile, you can put this Pokemon on your bench, and if you do, you put three damage counters on this Pokemon, which helps power up the Zorak V-Star, especially with the four damage pump that we're playing, which allows you to move two damage counters from one of your Pokemon to your other Pokemon in any way you like. Manaphy helps protect the bench, and then you have four boss, four research, and two Marnie, along with Cape Jaw Bog, which helps you in damaging your bench by putting two damage counters on the Pokemon that you decide to bench, and if your opponent benches when it's in play, then it's a little boost to the damage output. Quick Ball, Incense and Ultra Ball to help find the Pokemon, Scoop Up Net to help retreat, and then Double True Energy helps power up um, Zorak V-Star, but if you manage to attach the powerful energies as well to help with the damage, or the capture energies to help set up, that's really good. Um, I could see myself dropping all the energies and just playing four Double True Energies, but I think that's a little too high risk for my taste, so we'll keep it like this for now. And so let's jump into the ladder after a quick message from our sponsors. If you're planning on buying any cards from TCG Player, make sure you use our affiliate link right here in the description of our video to help support the channel. It's the best way to do it and it's free. Looking for PCGO codes? Photon Store has all the latest sets and promos instantly delivered to your email. You can use Tableman code when checking out for 5% off. Card Market is Europe's largest online marketplace for Pokemon cards. Whether you're looking for sealed product or singles, vintage or the latest sets, just follow the link in the description to find what you need. This video is sponsored by the Pokemon TCG deck building website, PokemonCard.io. Alright, so we have lost the coin flip, that means we're going second. We have a awkward-ish hand. So we'll start the mana fee. I mean, we get Zork out on turn one, which is nice. We also get a Mulligan to see what we are up against, which is Dialga V-Star. Okay, I feel like we should be okay-ish against Dialga V-Star, provided we have enough set up to where after they take two or three prize or however much they have, um, we just go ahead and bop them, right? We one-shot them. That should be good enough, but we'll see. Yeah, we shall see. We might end up disrupting them with boss on turn one. We'll see. There's plenty, plenty of options. That top deck is not ideal. <clears throat> uh, all right. That'll be IP pass. Switch. Mysterious tail. All right. Okay. No, that's not great either. Why are they removing weakness? That makes no sense. Um, okay. This is definitely very scary overall. I think I'm going to have to to this, play very, very defensively here. 
I can definitely discard the Halucha. That was the Zork, and then just hope, right? I'm honestly just hoping here. I think I'm going to attach the energy to the mana fee, and I'll pass. Not great. Yeah, not great. A simple switch attach boss. Which, oh my god. <laughs> Alright, they're just holding the cross switchers. They do go out into the Mew. Can you imagine they whiff the attachment? That would be very weird. Energy search. Avery. And now they just need a way to retreat. They can even afford to discard the energy because Metal Saucer and then attach retreat. All right. I'm just going to go ahead and pass here. Um, concede. On to the next match. All right. We get to go first this time, which should hopefully make things a lot better. We're up against a water deck. Um... Have an interesting decision to make on turn one. I mean, we'll see what we get off the mulligans, but do I Ultra Ball into the Bidoof? Or do I hold the Ultra Ball to go into the Zorak V-Star? I think both options are valid. Um, the Choice Bell top deck doesn't really help me at all making that decision, but now I already have the V-Star. So this only stops basic Pokemon, right? So should be fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and Ultra Ball away these two i might end up using boss on a benched palkia and i'll go ahead and play the stadium bench the bidu for the damage and you know what i'll attach the choice belt and i will pass we'll see what we get um we are due for a nice explosive turn two however like i said i rely a hundred percent on the double turbo to be able to attack even so i i don't know i've been thinking a lot about energy loto maybe just playing energy loto is better like four double turbo four energy loto might be better and then that frees up even two spaces or and two energy four energy load might be a lot like you would play three and that's three spaces you gain probably one oranguru to be able to um save double turbos from getting discarded as you definitely aggressively discard here probably an extra switching card which i've mentioned quite a few times that this deck is missing and then i don't know what else okay so it's palkia with kyurem not just pure palkia so we do have the capability to one shot thanks to halucha Do see the battle VIP pass straight up. There's the Palkia getting benched. For a little bit of damage, which is nice. See the Oranguru. Okay. If I had a guaranteed double turbo energy, I would try my luck and go boss on the Palkia. But because I don't, or now on this dude with energy, but. <laughs> okay, deck. <laughs> okay, um, I think going after the Palkia makes a lot of sense. Although, I can still get KO'd by the Curem, right? And I am down one choice belt. Ah. Uh -uh. So maybe just go after the Kiram. So yeah, this, this deck feels like a quad choice build deck. Mm. It's also easier to KO the Palkia, right? I just need four damaged Pokemon, so I can leave the active on damaged. <clears throat> Alright, we'll draw five first. Hopefully we don't draw a lot of double turbos and stuff. Uh, this is pretty acceptable. This is really good, actually. Really, really good. And I definitely wish I had four choice belts in this. Okay. So I somehow need my opponent to maybe whip the KO next turn. It's not looking likely, but it's possible. Um, No threat of bench damage next turn, but I might as well just establish this friend. 
I did prize a V star though, so I will need to unlock another one. Unless I choose not to use my, my ability here. Which I generally could. I generally could choose to not use my ability. So I have the guaranteed Zorak V-Star replacement. The issue is I don't ever now one-shot the Cure and VMAX. So you know what? I'm just gonna go... I mean, this doesn't matter, right? I'll do that. Just for the bonus damage, and then I'll Phantom Star. I trust the process that I'll be able to... Maybe I can just go boss boss and win that way. Maybe that's how I'm going to be winning this match. And then... I mean, might as well bench the mana feed right instead. So I can quick pull away this for the mana feed. Might as well just gain the bench protection right here. All right. Ticking Curse. I won't be able to go boss boss now. I might not need to. We'll see. I did unlock the Zorg, which is nice. Uh, yeah, this feels like a quad choice build deck. This definitely feels like a quad choice build deck. I think I want to rework the energies that way. Like just four choice belts and a bunch of energy lotos instead of the powerfuls. And or anger for sure to help conserve the double turbos when you need to. And the evolutions as well. Okay. They will be essentially undressing themselves, right? <laughs> After they have to discard all the energies to knock me out. Finding both boss and a double turbo off of the barrel seems really difficult here. Really, really difficult. So we'll see. Okay, there's the bucket. Yeah, so I guess the question is, can they attack three times back to back? I think they might be able to. Uh, yeah, because it's not even sure that I can attack three times back to back. Because I can't one-shot this dude, I can never one-shot it. I can never attach two energies at once. And this is where even like the, the Melanie variant would be better because then i could go like melanie one water attach powerful and then i'd have more than enough to knock out the curian so either four choice belts or um try melanie with powerfuls if i had double turbo boss double turbo boss then that would make things much simpler right but i mean i can still try to get that i guess it's not impossible. It's unlikely, but not impossible. I still have all double throws and all bosses in the deck. Assuming none are priced, which not so sure. Alright. Four energy in play. I do find the boss plus double true. I might commit to that going after the Kiran right there. Alright. So that damage bomb. I mean it's a card I can play, I guess. Which is good. So I can use this and then grab. No, this, right? Yeah. And then I need to fail. Okay, I did prize a boss. I didn't prize a double turbo. So chances are I will find the double turbo and not the boss. Well, it's more likely, rather. And I can do this, fail the thing, and then just bench this friend. And then just play damage bomb and move from 
Uh, I guess this to you. That's it. And then boss double turbo. Nope. No boss and no double turbo. Okay. Um, I mean, I'll definitely keep the halucha here. Ah, oh, you know what? Imagine if I could have... It's too late now, but nah. I mean, KO'd with Diancy. Yeah, attacking with a single prizer would have been good here. Okay, well. We get that. And we go Ticken Curse. So, I need my opponent to whiff an attack. That's really unfortunate. That's really, really unfortunate. I have the next attack available. Yeah, I should have I should have planned that better. I should have gotten back the Gengar instead of the Diancy and just benched the Halucha and the Diancy and then next turn I tried to attack with the Diancy. That's what I should have done. That might end up costing me big here. We'll see. Like I said, it'll come down to can my opponent get back to back attacks. Which assuming they're playing the four Melanie version, it seems realistic. Okay. Yeah, and with double QRM, it does seem realistic. I should have thought this through more. Because if they needed to use Melanie to attack me next turn, I would have been completely safe. So that's my bad. But I thought about this more thoroughly. Um. Uh, I did. I also priced my last Oric B, right? So if I had that, I could use that as well. I could have used that to attack. Meh. That's my bad. That is my bad. Okay. They're gonna get the two prizes. <sighs> yeah. Ugh. They're gonna need Melanie. Will they have access to their last... Well, one of their last two Melanies, I guess. Yeah, if I... Well... Okay, if I had... Hmm. If I hadn't... Yeah, if I could knock out with Diancy, I mean, they could still go attach and use the ability and then boss, right? But it would be more cards. It would be, it would definitely be more cards necessary. So, that's my bad. <clears throat> Absolutely my bad. Um, can't even Marnie at this stage. So, I want to bring back the Gengar. And then, I want to damage pump away from this friend. Then I'll quick ball away the research. Fail this. And then, I'm looking for Marty, right? To maybe help reduce the chances. I have two. No Marnie. So if they have it, they have it. Darn, I messed up. I mean, I messed up by not getting an energy attachment on turn one. I messed up by not having boss double turbo, which is like the random thing. What are you going to do? But given that that happened, I definitely messed up in that. Oh, Radiant Greninja promotion. That is peculiar. Okay, well, there's their energy. So now they just need either Melanie or attachment. But now they need a way to retreat. No. Why would they promote the Greninja? OK, 
Okay. Well, maybe not warning them was a good a good thing. Here we are. That's not Melanie. So now we need switching card plus attachment for turn. Did we somehow do this? That means my hand also sticks. Rotom phone. Okay. So we have another Oranguru. So I'm guessing they're looking for an energy in their deck of the Rotom phone to then Oranguru for it. Seven, eight, nine. Ooh. Yeah, they must be looking for the energy. Um, unless their last energy is bottom three or energy retrieval too. They picked very quickly, so I'm guessing they got it. But yeah, if I'd been able to take a knockout or the stadium, if I'd been able to take a knockout off of the Diancy, I would have won this game. So that's my bad. That is absolutely my bad. Oh, rough, 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 rough. Um, but yeah, I, yeah, live and learn, right? That that was a big mistake, though. I definitely should have thought that through more. I was playing too quickly. All right, let's play one more. All right, we're going second with a bit of in the active, which is never a good thing. <laughs> and we're up against Mew V Max, okay. So this will be interesting for sure. We can KO the Mew V Max with Halucha or Choice Belt, assuming they don't have Oricorio down. Which lately it seems that no Mew deck is playing Oricorio. Alright, we have a pretty decent hand too. I'm definitely glad I won't have to discard the double to go immediately. That head flip means they get their Genesects. Two Muse. That is a very bad choice when going first. Like, just grab the Genesect, you know? Draw extra cards, you'll find the Mew eventually. It's more likely that you'll draw into the Mew when having three Genesects on one Mew than it is that you will draw into the Genesects. Oh. My God. <laughs> well, okay. Well, I mean, that just means I need choice build and Olucha to get the KO, or I need the powerful energy to come through for me. Okay, that was a very good top deck. So, definitely gonna bench. Okay, the Olucha is here, which is nice. Definitely gonna go ahead and do this. And then. Um, I feel like I should get rid of the damage bump. I'm not happy about it, but just establish another beat of, yeah. All right, and then I'll just attach the powerful energy to one Zork. I'll go ahead and Marnie, and somehow draw two bosses orders. But I mean, this is workable, right? I won't need bosses orders in this match, so that's fine. And nothing can happen to my Gengar, so I might as well just... Well, you know what? If there's an Escape Rogue played, I actually wouldn't mind losing the Gengar instead of the Bidoof. We'll pass. Likely getting targeted on the Zork. Um, best case scenario is that Meloida doesn't attack me and it's Mew VMAX. That would actually be very good. Escape rope. Okay. Yeah, I mean, double B barrel would be really good. Okay, power tile played. Genesect. And we'll see. I would really love for just a Mew VMAX to take a knockout here. Oh, the lost CD. Oh my god. Well, that would have been really bad. That could have been, could have been game breaking. I did not consider that option. Oh, I actually did not consider that option. Okay, my opponent will do me the favor of promoting. They need energy plus me off of those four cards. I feel like that's a little bit of a high roll of the boss, but I guess, no, yeah, because then they definitely camp the Lessa. 
So that, that seemed like a bad choice. Okay, so now I could be the one to high roll here. Um, okay. It's just, what if I don't get an energy? I'm just gonna establish this. It would be amazing to draw a capture energy. Or even a powerful energy. Ah, uh, do I high roll? Do I try to high roll here? So they're down one power tablet. I honestly think KOing this me would be correct if I end up getting a KO. But what if I just knock out the Meloetta? What if I'm content with that? Because I still have the whole Lucha. So maybe that's just better, because there's a chance I whiff the KO, right? But there's a there's a very low chance I whiff if I just research here. Yeah. Go ahead and do that. Okay, looking good. Let's go ahead and evolve into this friend. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach the capture. Establish this friend. Oh, I actually don't have the KO. <laughs> I actually do not have the KO here. So do I just go double beep? Yes, I think I do. Because both of the bench dudes have a choice belt, right? So that's fine. Now I need one of my three damage pumps. If I have to discard the double, I'll discard the double. Oh, discarding two doubles is not great, though. Okay, oh, still thin. Yeah, I can't afford to discard two doubles. Ugh, missing the Meloeta KO here is going to be so bad. So serendipitously bad. Okay. And about this dude. So we go Bibral number two. Please don't whiff. Drawing that other double through will sucks. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's so bad. <laughs> so, so bad. Those energies. Wow, the energies are so awkward with this deck. Because of the double turbo. But yeah, I really couldn't afford to go like big wummy right there. Okay. I will 100% need damage pump next turn. Maybe the double keyboard was a mistake. Boss. On that Zorg. Okay. I'll take that. It also doesn't help that I haven't drawn a stadium, right? Okay, but that's okay. We'll get knocked out, and then we'll go attach, bench. No, because I then I'll need two damage pumps. Might not be able to do that. Ugh. Yeah, stupid Ricorio, dude. Really stupid Ricorio. What if they don't find a switching card? <laughs> That'd be really funny. Such an awkward game for both of us. They're down one escape rope and one switch. I feel like my opponent's definitely put like, yeah. What was that? <laughs> they didn't even need to give up at that point, but that was really weird. That was definitely a really weird. Really weird choices by my opponent, for sure. Um, but yeah. He's wins Zorak V-Star. It's, it's a very destructive deck. So, like, this is what I'm thinking. Now, I'll, I'll do this to finish the... Um, to finish the video right here. So, what I'm thinking of trying out is... Goodbye you. And goodbye you. And then just going, what choice belt? Putting in uh, your uh, um, Lodo. Oh my gosh, is it just one T? Yes, okay, so at least two energy Lodos, arguably three. Definitely an Oranguru. 
definitely an orangaroo. And then I have one spot left. Probably an herbalum. Yeah. I think I like this. But like after playing, the energies just have been so awkward. Um, in terms of like being able to get two of them attached to be worth it. So maybe just four double through was the way to go. Uh, this is what I would try um, in the near future. Yeah. Thanks so much for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.